hope that our efforts in the coming month will contribute to a better understanding of how the country is replenishing its resources for revival and the rebuilding of the country and its culture. It is also a celebration of Iraq's history, resistance, and aspiration for peace based on equality and justice. For me, Tad uh, Hamun, led by Iraqi women, is an essential for Iraq to recover from the tragedy of United Nations sanctions, of two wars, of military occupation, and many crimes against humanity, together with the failure of the UN to protect the people and the children of Iraq. Iraqi civil society, Iraqi individuals, have always been very, very much close to Palestine and very aware of the parallels. Our work also, I mean, two levels. We're talking about Iraq in general, what's happening in Iraq, but also we are talking about women. For 12 years, we covered various aspects uh, of Iraqi life. Research quickly led, actually, to London, to the Bertrand Russell Peace Foundation, who was pivotal in organizing the Russell Tribunal against uh, the Vietnam War. Many of us in this room were involved in constituting what we call the World Tribunal on Iraq. It's our responsibility to plead for accountability, to support any kind of initiative for war crimes, tri uh, tribunals, uh, and, and it's a moral obligation, in fact, for us to do that. We are against foreign occupation, and we still think that this, what happens now in Iraq, is occupation when, when you have uh, American uh, advisors in, in the ministries. So while it may have dropped away from the headlines, this is why we continued to produce the Iraq Occupation Focus newsletter. Clearly, removing Saddam Hussein was a byproduct of a much greater objective, which was the dismantling of the Iraqi state and its institutions. The failure of Iraq, followed by the injustice of austerity, comes together in a general crisis of legitimacy of politicians and elites. I think it's important for us to understand that the last war leads to the next war, that the last war has the seeds of the next war within it, and that's what we're seeing in the Middle East now. <laughs> In Fallujah, uh, they found, the doctors who investigated there found uh, levels of uh, cancer, you know, leukemia, you know, and so on. They're beyond what they found in Hiroshima. That's pretty significant. Iraq, the Middle East, North Africa in general is reductively seen, you know, in terms of conflict, wars, fundamentalism, terrorism and extremism or oil and lush deserts. And the Iraqi I saw and I met and I talked to in there are uh, continuing to live, continuing to um, resist in different ways. And if we want to show active solidarity, I think it's on these stories that we need to focus. Countries like Germany, Poland and other war devastated cities in Europe recovered. They rose back. They rose out of the ashes. Berlin, Dresden, Warsaw among hundreds. Why not Iraq? So much of the way we think about violence has focused on these massive spectacles, but a lot of the violence take, takes place on paper. And I think that in that invisible violence, the resistance to it and the victories of the resist, resistance to it is also invisibilized. Now, surely, if we think that you are um, instilling democracy into society, one of the vital um, columns of that democracy would be the right to collective bargaining and the right to striking. The law was not put in place until 2015 and this was something that people had to fight for and mobilize for in, 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 in a very important way. So remember this is a solidarity about next year we're going to have a month of solidarity with Iraq, which is a celebration of Iraqi history, Iraqi culture, and also a celebration of your solidarity. So let's work together on this. And thank you very much.